Today I would like to talk about installing the brand new Quaif QDH2T limited slip differential into a Tesla Model S drivetrain. This particular drivetrain has already been disassembled, but the disassembly procedure is fairly straightforward and we'll show you how to reassemble it. Before we start, I thought you might be interested in a couple features of the Model S drivetrain. The unit is water cooled. The coolant enters here. A portion of that goes directly in to cool the rotor, then exits through this pipe here. The majority of the water goes into the casting to cool the stator. Here you can see where the water exits after cooling the stator passes through this part of the casting and then cools the power electronics exiting through the casting down here. The remainder of the water from the rotor passes through this controlled orifice, goes straight through the casting and then cascades down through this heat exchanger where it combines with the water that just cooled the power electronics. The water from the rotor is likely at a higher temperature and the Tesla decided to use uh, this portion of the transmission case as an extra cooler. As far as disassembly, you're probably going to want to start by draining the gear case oil by removing that uh, bolt right there. You're going to want to remove the six nuts that hold the bearing retainer on the side. And then there's 18 fasteners which hold the transfer case together. There's a solid bus bar that connects the motor and the power electronics. You can access them through these three holes right here. So the first thing you're going to do is to remove the orange plastic cover and then get in there with the socket and remove the three bolts holding the bus bars together. So after removing the bus bar bolts, the bearing retainer nuts, and the gear case uh, bolts, you can then use a screwdriver to gently pry apart the case halves. Now the important thing to note here is that the case has to be split uh, in the way I've shown here. Uh, you probably can't see, but uh, above the bus bars there is a cable that uh, runs and that uh, uh, connects the encoder and uh, temperature sensors on the motor end to the controller board so you absolutely don't uh, want to damage that cable. And while you're inside uh, you should also uh, inspect all, all the gears and make sure everything looks uh, good. Uh, unfortunately there's probably nothing too much you can do if uh, they don't as uh, I don't think Tesla will uh, be selling you any repair parts for sub-assemblies. Again, I don't have the old open differential to show you the disassembly, but after pulling it out from the unit, you need to use a bearing puller or press to remove the two roller bearings at either end. After you remove the uh, small end roller bearing, then you can unbolt the ring gear. Upon reassembly, uh, at the very least, you need to clean the bearings and make sure there's no roughness or they run smoothly. But I would uh, probably recommend just replacing uh, both, both units. It's cheap insurance. Uh, the, the rest KF bearings are readily available. The large one is a part number 6310 and the small one is a part uh, 6309. And the other thing you need to know is that they're open with no dust seals and they're C3 clearance. With that information you should be able to pick up the bearings at any bearing supply house. You may have noticed that all the drivetrain bolts have a paint stripe upon them. And this uh, was done so that uh, Tesla technicians can quickly look um, at a sub-assembly and determine if any of the bolts have loosened. Uh, this is common practice in the race car world, but uh, this is the first time I've ever seen this in a production car vehicle. So that tells me that uh, Tesla is interested in doing things right, um, 
and also possibly that they have suffered uh, drivetrain vibrations in the past and um, are very concerned about this. So when upon reassembly we're going to want to make sure that we put a good uh, thread locking compound in there like a Loctite. Um, to do this you got to make sure that you uh, clean all the uh, thread surfaces very carefully so um, using clean, clean solvent uh, on the threads and on the bolts I would uh, wire wheel them to remove uh, old thread locker and uh, then clean them with the uh, uh, fresh solvent. So upon reassembly you're going to want to put the ring gear on uh, for first be before the um, bearing and retainer, otherwise it's not going to fit on. And we're going to want to put a little bit of uh, thread locking compound on each of the bolts before they go in. Now these are uh, high strength uh, M10.9 uh, bolts that are 10 millimeter. Uh, using a lubricant uh, such as uh, Loctite, uh, that probably means that we're going to want to torque these up to about uh, 45 uh, foot pounds. So when you after you snag up all of the uh, bolts, you're going to want to use a torque wrench and then tighten them in some sort of crisscross pattern to make sure that the things get uh, snugged up evenly. After reinstalling the ring gear and pressing on the bearings, you're ready to begin reassembly. Make sure that both halves of the gear case have been thoroughly cleaned of old gasket material and then wipe down with brake clean or solvent. To uh, insert the limited slip unit, make sure that the bearing retainer is oriented correctly. It's actually not a symmetrical pattern. And then use the bolts to help act as a guide when reinserting. Now be very careful not to damage the plastic oil shroud here or the plastic oil pump here. When you're sure that everything is lined up, you can use a rubber mallet to gently um, help the bearing seat. Once the bolts appear through the other side of the case, you can then use the nuts to help draw the uh, bearing in the final position. Again, make sure that the plastic cola pump gear um, properly meshes with the ring gear. After the new differential is in place and the nuts holding the bearing retainer are snugged up, you're ready to button up the case halves. Use a high quality gasket sealant. Tesla uses a product similar to Permatex's The Right Stuff. Apply sealant on one of the case halves, but before you do that, make sure that the O-rings around the water jacket ports and above the bus bar are intact. There's also a cardboard gasket that goes around the bus bars and make sure that's in place and hasn't slipped. There are two locating dowels that help align the two case halves. After assembly, the 18 bolts can be reinstalled. You don't need Loctite here as there will be gasket sealant on the threads and 15 to 20 foot-pounds there should be sufficient. Now the only thing that needs to be done is that the three bolts holding the bus bar need to be reinstalled. Apply those with liberal amounts of Loctite. After the drive unit is reinstalled in your vehicle and the axles are back in, you can fill the crankcase with uh, gear lubricant. Tesla recommends a Dexron 6 compatible automatic transmission fluid.